That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Great Freedom, the Britney Spears story. Uh, I kid. Mm -hmm. It is the second film directed by Sebastian Mies, uh, premiered at the 2021 Cannes Film Festival in Un Certain Regard, where it won the jury prize. Uh, Mubi is releasing it March 4th, 2021. Notably, it was Austria's uh, official submission for Best International Feature, of which it made it all the way up to the shortlist. Sebastian's first film? Second. Second. No, what's his first film? His first film is called Still Life from 2011, which I haven't seen. I enjoyed this movie. Mm -hmm. It's sad. Yeah. But uh, it's it gave me a lot to think about. I really liked the main character, Hans, who's played by... Franz Rogowski. Who I know from a movie about a mermaid. Undina! He also uh, plays uh, Isabelle Huppert's son in uh, Haneke's Happy End. He's in a lot of stuff, actually. He's really good. Yes, he is very good. He deserves some attention because he transforms his body uh, within the story, which takes place over the course of like two decades. But, excuse me, <coughs> the basic story is Hans is this gay man living in Germany. And we see it's... He he was uh, taken to concentration camps because he's gay. And then once he was released from the concentration camp, they took his ass to prison because he was in violation of paragraph 175, which basically says you can't do gay shit. And he liked to do gay shit. The opening of the film is a bunch of surveillance footage inside of like a public restroom where he's having sex with a lot of different people. Those little videos reminded me of the videos in that movie Sinister. Yeah, that old camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he gets sent to prison. But we get sort of like flashbacks and forwards of him in prison on three different occasions. And the bulk of the story is this man and the relationships he develops each time he is sent to prison. But in the late 60s, he finally released because, because paragraph 175 is abolished. So now it's not illegal to be gay. Well, okay. or do gay things. So, no, what happened was in 1969, paragraph 175 was modified to lower the age of consent to 21, where you could do homosexual shit. Um, it wasn't officially abolished until 1994. Okay, good to know. So then, so we see Hans at the end of the story get released from prison, and we see him go to a gay bar for the first time, and he goes twice, I think, and we see he seems a little overwhelmed. He goes to like some bar where they have like an underground dungeon and he sees a bunch of people being very sexual. And it, when he leaves the bar, he immediately walks by like a jewelry store and he breaks into the jewelry store, steals something and then waits on the corner for the police to pick him up. The end. So we would presume that he wants to go back to prison. Um, yeah, this movie gave me a lot to think about. Do you want to go through your notes? Um, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, again, it's the performance of Rogowski, I think, that really makes this uh, worthwhile. Um, the first time we see him go to prison, it's in 1965. That's not the first time he's in prison. It's the first prison stint as the audience we see. And we see him bump into a guy named Victor. Mm -hmm. and Played by Georg Friedrich. And they clearly know each other. So then we flash back to his first time in prison and we realize that He's known him in the decades that he's been going in and out of prison. And Victor is not gay. No, and they, they were first cellmates in that uh, what we finally flashed back to and he would beat him up. Because he would beat him up, but then he saw, Victor would beat up Hans because he was gay, but he softened towards him when he saw that he had been in a concentration camp because he has a tattoo in his arm. And Victor does like jailhouse tattoos. So he offers to tattoo over his... Um, camp tattoo and they kind of bond until Han says something to Victor that maybe questions his like sexuality but just like out of necessity oh because Victor says I don't know how you could never be without a woman and Han goes Hans you goes, better get used to it. well you better get used to it because you has been in prison all this time Victor gets mad there are also several scenes where Hans gets put into solitary confinement which I thought were really interesting because it's during these periods we usually get a transition and we see his body transition from, because he's pretty muscular in the 1960s, but then we flash back to the 40s when he's left the concentration camp. Of course, he looks almost emaciated. 
That was pretty remarkable. The scenes where he's in, uh, that shows Victor sends him like cigarettes and matches. And mm-hmm. there are moments that re- remind me of this adaptation of a, a, a Genet production, uh, Un Chant d'Amour, which is about men in prison. And uh, there's some very uh, memorable sequences with cigarettes and sharing cigarette smoke and that. But. So we see in the three stints of Hans in prison, we see one of those is where he sort of connects with Victor. Another one is where he connects with a man who was arrested at the same time he was. Leo. And then they sort of have a connection. And then another man in the third stint who... Oscar. Oscar, who they had a relationship outside of prison. And it's with Oscar that... It would seem like Oscar couldn't take being in prison anymore, so he commits suicide. Mm -hmm. But... um, I thought it, the film is sad, but it's also frustrating because Hans is, you know, it's his behavior that's keeping him in trouble. So, of course, you think like, well, if you could just stop doing these things. And it's not just him being gay. It's like once he's in prison, he gets into fights to protect these men because he gets into a fight to protect Leo, Oscar and Victor. Mm-hmm. And then gets put in solitary confinement. And then, of course, outside of prison is doing things that are getting his ass thrown in jail. So it's frustrating in one regard because it's like if you could just not do those things. But obviously he's, you can't tell someone not to be gay. And what kind of life is that to hide that? Although right. many of y'all out there know that. But um, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, I found it was just, it's just a hard movie to watch. Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I do wish we had seen, because it takes, uh, you have to acclimate to its rhythm and this going back and forth. And it would have been, I, I wanted to see what, uh, Hans was like outside of prison because he, he is going back and forth and we just never see it. So my biggest critique is on the actual story itself. I, I didn't care for Victor's character very much, um, the writing of that character, but also like you said, the way it's filmed and the way the story's told, it seems like Hans has never left prison, even though we know he has because we see him returning. I think I needed to understand what life was like for him outside of prison because the other thing too is like, yeah, I just didn't understand. I'm not super familiar with life in Germany in the 50s for gay men. This character is like a handsome guy. Clearly, he gets a lot of play. So, I mean, it just seems like having that added texture of knowing what life outside of prison was like, I think would have helped a lot. Yes, yes. Um, I didn't mind uh, the construction of Victor as kind of this friend uh, that eventually kind of violates that established boundary by making him late him which i thought was there's a scene yeah towards in the late the later stage like in the 60s when hans is in prison where victor asks him to perform oral sex on him because he's just been without for so long that was interesting uh yes uh, but but the the kind of care mutual respect that they have uh, again i think that could have been developed more uh than it is but but yeah uh, i uh, so i didn't like victor's hair either well, it was know, clearly a wig. Yes, it was. Because Hans, it looks like that's his actual hair. So they were able to shoot it in a way that he... Because he has facial hair at one point. And... He, he's a well... That's actually a, a, a very well-known actor uh, in Germany as well. Um, uh, I, so the bar that he goes to uh, when he's released at the end is called Great Freedom. Uh, and it's supposed to kind of be ironic. But, you know, I, I read that as... I think that it is kind of a powerful ending because, you know, how we develop sexually uh, it starts at a young age. And I think, you know, this is a person that whose sexuality was always tied into the taboo uh, and, and um, the consequences of getting caught. And here he is in a world where all of these men are frivolously being able to be themselves and he can't. So I think there's, there's a component of he can't or doesn't want or doesn't isn't attracted to that freedom, uh, if you will. That's a very interesting topic that I would like to talk about more, but probably not in this video. So maybe on the podcast. Oh, okay. well, because we don't have a lot of time. We we don't. I'm not editing a 35 minute video, but um, <laughs> but I think it's more appropriate for the podcast because there were a lot of interesting side topics related to the story. Yes, for sure. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, there's I, a sad scene where. Is it Leo? One of his little boyfriends, who's a school teacher, Hans tells like the parole board or whatever that they should, 
he's able to help his little boyfriend get out of prison because he signs like an affidavit saying that he forced him to perform these acts, which also lengthens Han's sentence, but then lets his little friend out. I thought that was very powerful because he clearly cared about this person. Then when he finds out, Hans happens to find out about paragraph 175 like in a magazine. So he's explaining it to Victor and then he says like, I'm free now. I thought that was a very powerful scene. It, it, he's a perpetual martyr, uh, I find, which is also interesting. And uh, yeah, I, it, it's just a really great central character and performance, mm-hmm. I think. Um, but yeah, if you want to know more about Paragraph 175, I suggest um, there's a documentary from 2000 by Rob Epstein and Jeffrey Friedman uh, of the same title, narrated by Rupert Everett, which is uh, informative. Um, there's also, and for films dealing with, uh, you know, because the Nazis were rounding up homosexuals and uh, disabled folks a- along with the Jews. So uh, I think it's people forget, I think, that part uh, of history and all that. Uh, so I recommend Bent from 1997 with Clive Owen and Mick Jagger and oh. Ian McKellen. <laughs> um, there's also a 2005 TV film from France called A Love to Hide with uh, Bruno Todeschini and Jeremy Renier that is also, you know, kind of in Jeremy Renier, the guy from the Marvel movies? That's Jeremy Renner. Oh. Jeremy Renier is I thought you were trying to be fancy. <laughs> no. Uh, this film, I, I, uh, you, you want to mention how you watched it? Oh, with no audio. It I was come, all subtitled. I come home and the spool has the, I'm like, what? <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to, the Apple TV was betraying me. I don't know. Uh, but I turned the lights on and you couldn't see. It's a very dark film. Mm-hmm. It's very murky, a lot of shadows. It was shot by Crystal Fournier, uh, who is the cinematographer on uh, Celine Sciamma's uh, Girlhood, uh, which is a decent film. Uh, and also a film by Susanna Nicchiarelli called Nico 1988, which has a, a fantastic Trina Deerholm performance playing Nico, uh, the woman who sang with the Velvet Underground, notably on All Tomorrow's Parties and other tracks. But I really recommend Nico 1988 for the look uh, and performance in that as well. But yeah. What would you give it? I would give it three out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five. Oh damn! Okay. I what what's his little name? The the man Fr- uh, Franz Rogowski. He's so good. He's very good. Yeah. Yeah, I think this film is worth watching for the subject matter, but also his performance. You need to see Happy End. He does this karaoke breakdance scene that's very interesting. Oh. Anything else? No, that's it. Listen to our podcast. Bye.